welcome back, ladies and gents, to the USSR. I'm Open Potato. This is Democracy 3, playing, of course, as the Soviet Union. Uh, things are going remarkably well at the moment. Uh, in the last episode, we managed to, uh, I guess, solidify our grasp on success in many ways, which is, uh, which is absolutely lovely. Uh, we conveniently ended up missing all of the massive interest rate uh, hike. And we're now running with reserves. We don't actually have any debt. Our reserves are currently sitting at 262 billion, which is not too bad, all things considered. Uh, you know, that's probably going to help us out of a little bit of a dodgy spot. Not for very long if, uh, if we run a substantial budget deficit, but at the same time, it's not too bad at all. Uh, we've got a couple of problems that I think we're going to solve in today's episode. First and foremost, the rare earth crisis, which is going to theoretically uh, reignite the technological advantage that was oh so miserably snatched away uh, a couple of episodes ago. We've also got the uncompetitive economy, uh, which I think that we're going to end. And I also think that we might be in with a chance of uh, ending tax evasion. Uh, income tax is set to go down substantially. So hopefully we're going to see the fruits of that uh, pay off. We want to pop it back up to 45% or thereabouts. But for now, we're just going to let it sort of cruise cruise down so that the tax evasion modifier can be uh, can be completely eliminated. Obesity, obesity is a little bit of a problem. Um, we're still trying to we're tr still trying to figure out the food price, um, and that is that is annoying. Uh, that is very very annoying indeed. Um, and I'm not even entirely sure how on earth we are going to get rid of that. I mean, the obesity epidemic literally is entirely contingent on agriculture subsidies and the food price. I mean, we could get rid of agriculture subsidies. But without abolishing it completely, we're not going to have a really meaningful impact on obesity. Uh, so that's certainly something to consider. Maybe we can look at introducing another, um, another token policy to at least go some of the way. City farms? Maybe city farms. Let's implement city farms. Let's see what this does. Farmers and farmer membership. Alright. Well, that's a, that's a 300 million pound, or a 300 million ruble bribe to farmers. Fantastic. Let's go to the next turn. We're not really at risk of assassination anymore, which is absolutely fantastic. GDP, by the way, continuing to rise. We've already, we've almost, uh, we've almost maxed out, which is pretty darn good. The election is getting closer, and we currently have, uh, what, 100% of the population as a member of the, uh, the Communist Party? Just as it should be, I would hasten to add. Yep. There we go. Like, I'm pretty sure that's... If that's not 100%, that's pretty darn close to 100%. Certainly the Social Democrats, the opposition, they got nothing. They got absolutely nothing. Um, speaking of speaking of what we're going to be doing over the next couple of turns, there's still a couple of things that we want to introduce before, uh, before I think this series can be officially capped off. Um, one, of course, is the universal static benefits. That's absolutely something that we need to do. There is also... Uh, where is it? It is not here. It's in public services. Yeah, it's the nationalizing the essential services. And then also, I think, state tertiary education. In fact, you know, we can introduce state tertiary education now. That wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. Uh, so let's maybe do that. I also want to see if we can try and... Ooh, human cloning research grants. Let's implement this just for the sake of it, whilst we can right now. Um, all right, this doesn't really do much for us, honestly. We'll fund it 1.3 billion. I'm not really that bothered about it. Yeah, I want to basically try and afford the nationalization of essential services and also uh, universal static benefits. The problem is, is that that costs a heck of a lot of money. Like, that is mega, mega, mega money. Uh, nationalizing the essential services... That costs us 26 billion. Tertiary education, 28 billion. And then, uh, static benefits will cost us 54 billion. That's crazy. That is absolutely crazy. Uh, not to mention the fact that our unemployment rate is basically zero at the moment. I think. Um, so, that's something to consider. I mean, what is our unemployment rate? 
Yeah, it's it's basically zero. Also, we've got a space program now, which is kind of nice. We're fully funding that. That's pretty darn good. Electricity consumption. Electricity consumption is at the max. And that pushes oil demand up by a substantial amount. Maybe we should try and solve this oil uh, issue that we seem to be having. Apparently, police drones increases electricity consumption by quite a lot. And the national monorail system only increases it by a little bit. That's a... That's a big question mark for me. Not quite sure why that's the case, but hey-ho. Um, energy efficiency. Energy efficiency is as high as it possibly can be. Which is nice. But ideally, we want to try and increase wind as well as uh, solar. I don't even know if there is any technology that we can um, that we can leverage to help us with that objective. I suspect not, to be honest. I think we might have it all. Uh, doesn't to me look, doesn't look like it. Nuclear waste disposal. Nuclear power. We could institute uh, a nuclear power station. Maybe, maybe we'll institute a nuclear power station. Also, a constitution of basic needs. I mean, it's not particularly socialist socialist, but I think it might be nice. Also, an ideological education. That is definitely something that I'm interested in. Alright, well, we're not able to do much with the current political capital that we've got. Uh, we also don't have the required amount to introduce a uh, introduce a constitution at the moment. We'll need 66 political capital in order to do so. Ministerial scandal. Whatever. GDP rose just a smidgen. 26, 26 billion budget surplus. All right, that's great. That is really, really good. So as soon as tax evasion is finished off, we will hopefully, 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 hopefully be able to raise our income tax once again. Ah, beautiful. Tax evasion is decreasing. Lovely, lovely, lovely. All right, you are just about to finish, which is great because that's going to unlock a little bit more GDP and productivity. And the uncompetitive economy modifier looks like it's going to be ending very, very shortly indeed, which I am very, very happy about. Capitalists still hate me, but the fact of the matter is, is that there is almost none in the country. The Enterprise Investment Scheme and the National Business Council it does look like it's increasing the number of capitalists ever so slightly, but whatever, not that bothered, to be honest. Um, so that puts us on 47 political capital. Uh, we can spend a little bit of political capital, but ideally I want to keep most of it. Most of it for some other time. Import tariffs. I would import tariffs only raise us 400 million. That seems pretty disappointing. Anything to do with electricity or anything to do with the environment, really. I am, I am pro on both of those things. Yeah. Nuclear waste disposal, hydropower, nationalize the essential services. I mean, maybe we just go for this right now. Ideological education. Let's go for nationalize the essential services. I want to see what this policy is going to do. And we've got roughly the amount of uh, money in the tank to make it happen. All right. Let's fund it fully. It's going to make everyone happy with us. GDP is going to increase, but not by the amount that we actually need it to, in co in to, to cover the costs. We will still theoretically be running a surplus, but hey-ho. Right, we're now completely economically independent. I think that's all of the uh, economically independent policies. I think we've unlocked them all, actually. Okay, so I'm expecting my budget surplus to be absolutely slashed over the next couple of turns. There we go, a small budget surplus of 3.29. Education is as high as it possibly can be, which is lovely. The global economy is in a recession at the moment. That does not make a slight bit of difference to us. We are actually in a remarkably positive situation where we don't need to care about the global economy. Not even slightly, to be honest. Obesity still rumbles on, and at this rate, I'm not sure that we're actually ever going to be able to solve it because we are just doing too well. Who'd have thought, eh? Who would have thought? Okay, economic, um, uncompetitive economy is definitely going to end next turn. Rare Earth Crisis is not going to end next turn, but the turn after that, which is lovely. And that means, theoretically, we should get our technological advantage back on the go. Still have absolutely zero idea how we get rid of sexism. 
And to be honest, I don't think I don't think we're ever going to be able to do it at this rate. But that's fine. How many turns are we are we until uh, to an election? Sixteen turns. Sixteen turns to an election. Okay, fine. Okay, sixty-four political capital. We're almost to the point of introducing a constitution, which would be pretty darn nice. Also, we've got the benefits. <sighs> yeah, I know. I wanna. I want to do it. I want to do it so much, but I really, really want to do it. But at the same time, not convinced that we're going to be able to. Let's see if we can introduce some smaller policies, rural development grants, um, small business grants. No. Oil drilling subsidies. Not really. Antibiotics ban. Home fabrication. Home fabrication grants, maybe. Vertical farm subsidies, maybe. Green electronics initiative. Uh, I mean, none of this stuff is really going to help me with my whole issue of food production. You know what? Yeah, let's, let's introduce mandatory micro-generation. So, theoretically, it'll be able to reduce uh, oil demand, which is pretty much what I'm after here. And it'll only cost us 10 million. 10 million, that's an absolute steal. Business startup campaign or trade council. Yeah, you know what? Labor Day, an official bank holiday. Let's do it. It's only going to reduce GDP by 2.7%, but we're going to pretty much unlock all of that GDP back from the finishing of the... Um, what do you call it? Yeah, the uncompetitive economy, which is going to end next turn. So we should see no difference. Allow the expansion of the airport. Yeah, we're still running a, you know, a fairly significant budget surplus, which I'm fairly happy about. Uncompetitive economy has ended. Lovely. Human cloning. Allow human, cl allow human cloning. That is something that I'm very interested in seeing happen. Sure, allow human cloning. We didn't actually introduce the human cloning policy. I don't think. Unless I'm being incredibly forgetful. But it doesn't particularly matter. Okay, an 8.39 billion budget surplus. By the way, our reserves are just continuing to climb, which is lovely. Uh, tax evasion, that doesn't look like it's going to be ending this coming turn. But maybe the next turn. Rare earth metal mining. Uh, come on. You know you can You know you know can get there. We might not have the ability to do this. Um, foreign relations. Can we bump up our foreign relations just a smidgen, maybe? Just a little bit, and we're pretty much there. Oh, this is going to be really annoying if we can't get this. Uh, does the green electronics initiative, does that actually help with the rare earth metal mining problem? It does. It does indeed. All right, let's fully fund that. It actually is pretty good for us, all things considered. Reduces our CO2 emissions. Unfortunately, it's coming a little bit, uh, a little bit too late, but that doesn't, that doesn't matter. Uh, what else should we introduce? Free school meals, free eye tests, food standards agency. Um, free eye tests? Free eye tests, sure. Let's introduce free eye tests. We might as well. Right, it's going to annoy some people, but also it doesn't matter. We're giving people free eye tests, for goodness sake. Uh, also, I don't think that there is any other way that we can influence... Uh, I don't think there's any other way that we can influence foreign policy. Maybe introducing a language course. I'm trying to think, like, if we introduce, or if we introduce a policy which furthers our foreign relations positively, refugee crisis. All right, that doesn't actually matter. Um, if we introduce a policy that furthers our foreign, you know, our foreign relations, makes everyone happy with us, then we will finish the rare earth metal crisis just that little bit quicker. Although, it looks like we're going to finish it now anyway, which is fine. Okay, tax evasion. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. Please, just finish. Alright, I know we're going to be in a budget deficit for a couple of turns, but that's only going to be for a wee while. We're going to we're gonna fix things. We're going to fix things next turn. Trust me on this. It's gonna be a it's gonna be a little nightmare whilst we wait for it to end, but whatever. Rare Earth Crisis has ended. That's great. We're running a budget deficit. We should take steps to reduce this. No, we shouldn't. We're not gonna do that. Positive discrimination. Um, sure. All right. Tax evasion. Please tell me that tax evasion is ending next turn. Please tell me that tax evasion is ending next turn. 
Oh, come on. Come on, it's so close. It's so darn close. Right, technological advantage hopefully is going to develop itself next turn. Not like it particularly matters at this point. Um, I mean, GDP has gone as high as it can go, which is lovely. But it means that we're not going to be able to we're not going to be able to grow our economy any further from here. Okay, great stuff. Uh, technological advantage, as predicted, ended up uh, ended up restarting, which is lovely. And also high productivity, which I also did not anticipate coming along, but it's produced uh, yet more positive modifiers for GDP. Not like it particularly matters, as it cannot go any higher, which is a bit of a bummer, but it is what it is, really. It is what it is. All right, we've capped out at 64 political capital, which is fine. Still no sign that tax evasion is going to end. That's got to be it ending. That's got to be it ending. We're losing all of our reserves, but that's okay. We're about to pump income tax right back up to 45% as soon as we're done. As soon as we're done with this tax evasion modifier, we're going to finish it. We're absolutely going to finish it. Okay. What can we introduce that would make people happy with us? In fact, we don't even need to introduce anything to make people happy with us. We don't even, we don't even care. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all. Uh, is there any taxes that we can introduce that would make... That would make things that would make things work. I feel that maybe we need to introduce a whole bunch of taxes in order to, in order to just you know fund our crazy uh, universal static benefits. A mail tax, punitive wealth tax, strengthen the tax code. I mean, that seems like a good idea. The poll tax. Low income tax shelter. I mean, I think strengthening the tax code seems like a pretty darn good thing to do. Oh, holy cow. This actually has a massive uh, implication uh, for tax evasion. Okay, well, that is fantastic. That's really, really good. All right. Well, we're going to make money, and uh, we're going to be able to pump our income tax right back up to probably like 50%. Civil rights on trial. Let the court rule. All right. That's fine. I hear your gavel. Hey, tax evasion has ended. Also, weather prediction technology. How lovely. Farmers are going to like me a lot more, which is perfect. We have a small budget deficit. Okay. Well, I mean, our budget deficit is about to turn into a mahusive budget surplus. Food price crisis, that's not entirely great. Obesity's down though, right? Obesity's down. That's a good thing. Uh, okay, income tax, let's plonk this right back up to like 50%. I know it's going to annoy like a whole bunch of people, but it is going to secure us a whole bunch of money. And you know what we're going to do with this whole bunch of money? We're going to do exactly what we said we we're going to do. We're going to introduce tertiary education. And then we're going to introduce a uh, universal static benefits. I feel at this point I have no choice. I have absolutely no choice. Oh, beautiful. 152 billion budget surplus. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Joint custody, sure. Is that gonna is that gonna have any effect on sexism? I don't think it will. Let me have a look. Uh, yeah, a little bit apparently, but not not enough to make a difference. I don't I don't suspect. Okay, sixty six political capital. Looks like we can indeed uh, introduce a constitution at some point. Universal static benefits. Here we go. This is gonna be a fifty five billion, fifty five billion investment. And it does actually increase GDP by 13%. I guess that's kind of like the thing that offsets consumer spending is going to increase. What? I mean, that's great. That's really, really good. Uh, let me see if I can find it. Where is it? Oh, there's so many stinking... No, not you. Oh, we did introduce the, home, the cloning research grants. Uh, where would it be? Up here? Universal static benefits, yeah. Consumer spending. Okay, consumer spending is down in the gutter at the moment. But it's actually going to increase. 
And that will, in turn, increase GDP, which is going to be lovely. All right, so that takes our surplus down to roughly 100 billion, which is fine. You know, it's not too bad. Uh, international Fusion Research Grant. Um, or project, should I say? I mean, I'm not too bothered about that. One child policy? Don't think so. Don't really feel it's needed. A Mars program, however, is definitely needed. Definitely needed. I also want to introduce the money supply as well. That's, that's definitely something that I want to do. Just for the sake of it, I feel like it's important to have these things. The budget is in good shape. We have, we have a current surplus of uh, 97 billion. All right, poverty is now going, I mean, it's just it's just disappearing, really. Um, do we have anything that we can do to get health to the maximum? I don't really know if there is anything that we can do to make health just a little bit better. Forced labor, we could reduce forced labor. I mean, that that is something that we could do. Forced labor is currently netting us a, a bunch of money. How's the environment doing? The environment's not doing too great, actually. GDP is, uh, is minimizing it. Fully funding recycling? Yeah, I don't think there's anything else that we can do to affect waste, which is a little bit of a bummer, but whatever. Uh, okay, well, let's go ahead and do the other things that we said that we were going to do. Um, money supply was one. Mars program was another. We've only got enough for one this turn. Let's do a Mars program. I want to see what the Mars program is going to do. All right, there we go. If unemployment needed to go any lower, I mean, it doesn't. It physically cannot. Uh, we'll just introduce it. Sure. I'm introducing that because I feel like it more than anything. Uh, speed limits. Raise speed limits. Sure. Not a problem. Holy cow, we are taking in a huge amount of money. Oh, well, that doesn't actually matter. That GDP bonus is nice, but it, it actually doesn't matter. It straight up just does not matter. All right, there we go. Whatever. Uh, what other policies are there? I mean, there's the state tertiary education, but I don't think that that's going to have a positive impact on health. And that's kind of what we care about, I guess, at this point. I'm just trying to think about what we do actually care about at this point since everything is going so unbelievably well. As I sort of said, I want to introduce the money supply. Um, yeah. Let's introduce the money supply right now. Because I believe... Why is this a... Why is this a good thing? Release the money kraken. I mean, there is literally no point in me doing it, right? There's literally no point. There's no point. There's, I feel that this should be a more fleshed out concept, the whole idea of money supply and inflation and whatnot. All right, well, that was a, a little bit of a waste of political capital. But at the end of the day, it doesn't particularly matter. I've got a pretty much unlimited, uh, unlimited quantity of political capital right now. All right, well, there is a couple more things that we can still do. One of which is maybe get a nuclear power station there's ideological education as well and also constitutional basic needs so that's all stuff that i think that we are potentially going to be looking at in the next episode because that's it for now ladies and gents thank you very very much for watching this has been democracy 3 playing of course as the soviet union i'll see you next time bye